Uh, once again, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you may be. Thank you for standing by, and welcome to today's Tivoli User Community Ask the Expert series. In today's session, our expert speaker, Stanford Madriaga, will discuss NetCool Omnibus Web GUI 8.1 User and Group Synchronization. Today's webcast is interactive, so you may ask a question at any time using the chat window located in the control panel. Today's session is being recorded, and you'll be provided a copy of today's materials following the call. And with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Stanford. Take it away. Thank you, Sam. Hey, guys. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to do a talk about user group sync in Omnibus Web 8.1. Uh, we're going to go over some background and then your options for Web GUI, uh, basic configuration, uh, some troubleshooting, and if you have any questions after. Um, Web GUI user group sync is basically a way to copy users and groups from a external source like an LDAP to the object server so that um, you can use Web GUI tools like uh, knowledge, priority, and the steps are in the admin guide. A little bit of history. Um, this feature was added back in WebTop 2.2. Thing was it 1.1. So the feature's been around for a while. Um, on my slide, here's a reminder: uh, 7.3 and 7.31 will be kind of uh, support in April 2016. So it's two um, options right here. Uh, as far as configuration, it hasn't changed much since 7.4 and 8.1. Only uh, difference that I can see is the, uh, the debug settings has been merged to server.init and the logs have been merged to the MPW uh, logs. Uh, depending where you started, you got uh, several options. Started with file base, uh, you can go to uh, object server and LDAP. And if you start with object server, you can go to LTAP, or you could go the reverse if you change your mind. But the gist of this uh, uh, slide right here is that you can only have one. You're going to be either object server or LDAP. And as far as LDAP, um, you have a few options uh, at the bottom left. Uh, I've worked with uh, Windows Active Directory the most. Uh, yeah, we claim that we support those, but um, I haven't really tried most of them, but they should work. Just a sample. This is my Microsoft Active Directory. Here I'm just uh, showing you my bind distinguished name, which is going to be the administrator. And with this information, you can get it from your LDAP um, admin. Uh, my user and groups are in the uh, L2 folder. So my base is going to be that uh, L2 IBM AD and then domain. Uh, right now I have one user, the Thomas uh, Watson, and he's uh, in the Sacramento group. So we're going to try to uh, sync those two. Uh, first, you got to uh, log in with a SM admin or anyone with ICSC admin role. So we just go and uh, click on the quad or gear icon and uh, load your uh, WebSphere admin console. First, before you do anything, uh, it's good to have uh, a backup of the file called wimconfig.xml. Just everything that's here gets saved there. So just in case something goes wrong, you can always go back to uh, the previous setting. From there, when you load the uh, admin console, uh, you toggle the security uh, tab on the left side and global security. Uh, you then click on configure. And at the bottom right, you see like a manage repo. And you get another window. And then you can click on add. And you can go LDAP repo. 
and this page is the gist of the connection. Uh, item five is to say a, a label, and six that would be the type or the brand of your LDAP. Seven is the host name. It's port. Eight is the bind distinguished name that I mentioned earlier, and nine is uh, the password. That's pretty much it as far as basic. And um, you cannot connect when you do apply or OK. I'll give you a quick banner above the red prompts that you cannot connect. So you cannot be able to uh, go wrong on this to be able to connect. And then um, you would have to go back to uh, the federated repositories uh, page again so that you can add it to the realm. Uh, that'll be in item 10. And on item 11, and you basically uh, click the uh, repo that we created. And for the 12th item, it's the base. And this is an extra. Uh, just in case you have a lot of users on the same group and you want to uh, kind of filter them out, you can add search filters. And as for the query, uh, you can check the uh, Microsoft.com website. We have a pretty good uh, tutorial on that one. As far as the web GUI portion, uh, there's only files to uh, adjust. The main one is the server.init. By default, it should be OK. The only uh, property that you need to change here is the users.credential.sync. By default, it's false. And as far as the groups that reload that mode and groups that reload that mode, uh, it's better to have it on a strict but only the users that have the web GUI roles are sent over. Basically, uh, the less users or groups you have, the better. And that file is the data source file. Uh, the config max page is the interval when uh, for the resync. That's in seconds. Uh, that's about an hour. So you then restart. After restart, you would still have to uh, log in as your SM admin so you can assign roles. Uh, for this one, I have assigned roles to the Sacramento group. Better to have in groups so you can cover more. Instead of uh, using user roles, you would have to uh, take every single user. And then um, after that, uh, when you check your uh, omnibus database uh, using the uh, omnibus administrator or uh, NCO SQL, uh, you should see the, uh, the user. And then uh, you can test it out when you go to uh, and then log out and log back in with the, uh, with the user. This one is uh, the T Watson. And uh, not very clear, but I'm trying to say here is that the one, the item one is that's my event viewer. Uh, just right click on an event and then uh, you want to acknowledge and then you can check the journal just to see if it works. And then that's item three. We do have uh, a couple of questions. Oh, questions? Oh, questions? I have a couple of questions, Dan. Okay. First, which directory is the server.init file located? Server.init file should be under your web GUI uh, home, SD. OK. And how is it syncing with the object server? All right, you can get that. Uh, how is it syncing with the object server? I think the question is, how does Web GUI do the, the user sync? Oh, 
Well, it uses like a, a plugin, a VMM plugin. It has a, a plugin, and it really does a direct connection to the object server to create all the users. You can see it if you run the object server and debug. It runs a number of commands to do all the object server user creations. Is it possible to have the user groups and roles automatically set instead of doing that manually? I haven't found a way to do it at the GUI side. You, on the GUI side, it's not possible. You, all you can do on the GUI side is set the group that gets assigned. On the object server side, you can assign roles to that group. It's, it's not automatic. You would have to go, go in the object server and do it manually, assign the roles that you want. Another question is, I have the LDAP configured, but no users are showing up in the object server. Well, that, that might lead into the next section on troubleshooting. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, well, should we continue on with the troubleshooting section, and then we can answer some more questions? Yeah. Yeah, if you have problems with the user sync, symptoms usually you cannot log in, uh, tools are not displaying, and then the other one is that you cannot see users in the filter builder, view builder, or in user preferences. Uh, before you start troubleshooting, like it's best to uh, have your uh, spec level at the latest. Uh, right now, the latest one is six five two. And then for uh, our mascutter, these are basically a list of items that we uh, would like to have so that you know, we can troubleshoot the issue faster. Oh, there was a question earlier on uh, where's the uh, server that in it. It's in its product home, which is web GUI SC server. So as far as uh, troubleshooting, we would want to be on the finest debug level, which is done in the server that in it. And you also have a, a bunch of um, web server-related uh, strings. I can see on item 5, and we want to have at least an hour worth of logs, and you can play around with those uh, settings, the log.max size and log.count. And this is the rest of the, uh, the mass gutter. And it, yeah, it tells you where all the logs are. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. Uh, this one is a it's, a, it's just a script, like a, basically a DSP. Uh, displays the users and groups that we're expecting to sync. Uh, this uh, DSP file is not available. Uh, you would have to request it from, uh, from support. For the logs, uh, these are the keywords that you would want to check that are related to uh, user and group sync. The end cost sync manager is enabled. That's when uh, you want to see if uh, it's actually enabled. And the HEMPS002I, 
those are the key, uh, the key error codes. And the uh, delete 30 data sources users, those are for uh, deletions. And the one at the bottom is for cre uh, creation of users. Okay, we have a few more That's all I have. If you have questions, uh, these are the uh, summary sources that you can uh, check out uh, the admin guide. Um, the RFE is the uh, enhancement request. This R is uh, the how to uh, open tickets and the support cycles and our new uh, project, the W Answers. Okay, we do have a few questions, and I'm also going to unmute Phil Stanton and Tan Wong Sotan so that they can answer questions as well. Okay. okay. Yep. First question, where can I find a complete guide to, on how to install Web GUI and connect to the object server? There is a published manual or guide. There is product documentation that details the steps. And I, we can make a link. There's a, a few. Well, this is the admin guide right here on the, the page, isn't it, Stan? Yeah, that's an admin guide. It tells you uh, like step by step. Uh, what I did in this presentation is basically give you like a visual. The next question is how to enable SSL or FIPS in AES. We didn't really cover that in this presentation. You would have to first enable SSL and FIPS in the object server, and then you could configure the web GUI data source connection to also use the SSL and FIPS to the object server. Thank you for Stan, is, Stan, is there any additional configuration for just the user sync for SSL or FIPS? I think it's all in the data source connection. Yeah, it's just going to be on the, uh, the data source uh, file. Okay. Well, if, if you're doing FIPS and SSL, I would assume that you're going to do the LDAP SSL as well. So you'd want to trust that search. So you pretty much need to create a certificate between object server and your web GUI. So is the the step is a bit more complicated for us just to give you step by step over the phone. But everything is in the admin guy on how to set those up. Yes, maybe we can look at doing that for a topic in the future. The next question is, is there only one group allowed for the group sync, such as VMM users? And that I don't know. I have only used it once. I haven't seen a, a request on, how, on, on that. Yes, I believe there's only one group that you can configure. After the initial sync, you could go in and assign different groups within the object server. Uh, so, yeah, that VMM users group, it's a like a synchronized marking group, like to mark the user in the object server as being a synchronized user. I've seen people use more than one. Um, because they're trying to like synchronize different object servers and then um, link the object servers through a, a gateway. Um, it doesn't work out so well because what you end up having is, yeah, the synchronize works pretty well until one user is on both sides 
and then then you're running into conflicts and the ID is changing. So yeah, use one group. Okay. The next question is what happens when you change the object server? Is that from data source or for authentication? They I mean when WebGUI is configured to connect to a different object server. Well, I guess you can update your MCW data source definition file. That's for your data source. And then you have to rerun uh, the uh, web GUI to connect to a, a new object server for authentication. Does that answer your question? Okay, they want to know if there's a change in the data source. So after they update the, the data source, it would connect to the new object server, and then it would still do an initial user sync based on the properties that were already set. Right, it will be, everything will be the same thing as that you just change your object server. Then if you have some kind of reporting and tries to do a new object server, you may have a different IDs. That's something you want to watch out. The next question, did the issue get fixed where the LDAP users are created without passwords? Yeah, I think that one is related to the one where by, from last time I heard, it's a, a behavior. It's because by default, users are uh, disabled. So you cannot really log in into the object server when they're disabled. Yes, that's a good point. The, the user sync is really just for the web GUI users to be able to run tools within Web GUI against the object server. It's not really for the users to be able to log in directly to the object server from the desktop event list or from the Omnibus Administrator NCO config GUI. Um, you can configure your users, but it takes additional configuration in the object server where you would have to enable the users, set passwords, set correct roles for the users. The, the VMM user sync here is really just for the users to be able to connect to Web GUI and run tools that will update events like Acknowledge. And, and it's recommended not to mess with those synced users in the object server. Like if at all possible, use a different account to log directly in. We have another update on the, the passwords. The creation of passwordless users has become a problem when the object server enforces password complexity. I will have to check on that and see if that was resolved. I will get back to you, Ramon. We do have a, a way to restrict passwords within the object server, and I could see that's a problem. The next question, does the sync only allow you to access Omnibus via the web GUI? We just talked about that. Um, Phil Stanton, can you expand on why they recommend not uh, 
using the same users to connect directly to the object server as with the web GUI user sync? When you start uh, making changes to the users that were synced uh, into the object server using that sync tool, um, it keeps an internal record of what it's created and where it's created and how, etc. So if you start like enabling that synced user account and adding it to different groups and stuff, sometimes it'll cause the sync to fail. And then new users don't get added. The next question, is there any limit of data sources that Web GUI supports? I mean, can I add in NCO data source definitions to XML? Is there any limit in there on the number of object servers? Yeah, I'm not aware of any limitations on the number of object servers you can put in there. It's usually dependent on how good your hardware is. Sorry, are they asking that they're trying to sync a bunch of object servers? I, I, I think I'm clear with the question. From, from when I was testing it, it only syncs to the primary object server. So it's expected that the users get distributed through the normal uh, object server linkages from your primary to your backup to your displays, et cetera. OK, that makes sense. Where is the ncw.xtrace.log file located? It's under your Etsy data sources. Okay. The next question, for LDAP authentication, the guide says to configure the VMM plugin to write to the LDAP directory. What is the, requir the requirement for writes to the LDAP? What if I only want to authenticate against an existing corporate LDAP? and have no write permissions. As far as the requirement to bind username to just be able to read, are you saying that you want to use tip oh, dash to write back to your LDAP server? Yes, they're saying the guide says that it has to have, has to allow it to write to the LDAP directory. But as far as I know, it's really only read access unless you want to do something like change your password or, or change the groups within LDAP. Yeah, that's right. correct. If you're setting the LDAP as your default uh, parent repository, then you'd need write access. So maybe the guide has you do that. I, I'm not familiar. Yeah, usually you go one way. It's a, normally corporations that doesn't want you playing with the LDAP servers. The next question, what is the minimum required role on the object server for the user configured to perform the sync, which I assume is the user configured in the data source definition? The document always uses root as the example. The most basic one is the NCW user.
And the, I think they're asking about the root object server user, what roles are required in the object server to perform the sync. And it, it does use your data source user, so you do need a, most of your permissions to be able to allow Web GUI to connect to the object server. It's going to select and update events. Um, it needs to have access to create the users in the object server. That's why normally everyone uses root because root is your system user. So if you're using a, a different user ID, I would also use a system object server user. Yeah, I just had a PMR about that. Actually, it's uh, that's that's what L three is asking for. They there was a time back in an older version where they gave me like specific uh, like roles um, that those groups would have, like just put these roles onto the user. But uh, right now they're saying just use the system. The next question, I'm not sure if this is relevant to this topic, but when removing a user from the object server, how do we make sure that all the user information is removed from Web GUI? Yeah, there's a, if, yeah, when you don't remove the, uh, the roles assigned to them, they stay. Uh, the Dash team have a tool to uh, clean those up. Is that a tool that they would have to open a, a PMR to request? I believe so. I haven't seen it uh, publicly available. Yep. Okay. So if you have any, any users that are still remaining or if you'd like to have that tool to clean up, just open a PMR. We can send it to you. The next question regarding the disabling of the VMM users. If I as an admin are a valid user via a valid LDAP group on the web GUI, then must I use some other account for my NCO config operations? And, and yes, we usually recommend having a different account within the object server than the account that you would use with the, the VMM configuration, just because of what Phil mentioned earlier, where it keeps a, a internally a, a list of the changes between the users. Next question, what attributes of the Active Directory user record are used to create the user record in the object server with the GUI sync. And they're wondering if it's a, if the formation of the full name is used and not the username. Yeah, I'm trying to think it's probably Yeah, I'll, I will have to check on that one. I believe it was a CM. Does it use the the distinguished name? You're, you're talking about the the name yeah, that the, is in the object server. Yes. What okay. what data is created in the user in the object server? How does it create the username and and does it populate the full name property in the object server? I think it uses the username, last name, and then full name is uh, first name, last name. Yeah. So it's a copy from the LDAP. So whatever yeah. you see in Web GUI, um, manage user. So it should show your user ID plus I think it's last name, comma, first name. And then in object server, you see under the name column is the username and the full name is your uh, first name and last name. I think by default in the object server it's actually 
uh, like the way that most people set up their LDAPs, it ends up being first name, last name, last name, unless that got fixed. Yeah, I think we have a fix on that one now, so it's just last name twice. Is that is that like an SP2 or something? I think it's probably an SP. Probably fix that. I'll have to check. Um, they they said they only see the login name and the last name, not for the full name. There might be an A par for that because there were some issues where the the full name wasn't being populated correctly. Yeah, um, I was going to just create a PMR so we can check the version that's customer using. That might be yeah, a fix, it, right? It, it depends on, on what they have in their LDAP and where they have it. Different LDAPs hold things different places. Another question, if they change the full name of a user in the object server, is that going to screw up the user sync? It could. I mean, it could stop it from syncing, or it could just force it to delete all the accounts and remake them. So pretty much any user that you synced it over to object server will show up disabled, you know, so don't touch them, just leave them alone. Okay. Um, back to the question about the requirements for rights to LDAP. Um, it sounded like Stanford said only reads are required. Is that correct, Stanford? Only reads are required to LDAP? Yeah, I think that's all it's needed. As long as you can browse. I believe so, too. We have some customers that are only doing reads. Um, if you allow rights, you can do some more administration from TIP or DASH on the users, but if you don't allow it, it will still work. The next question, we are requested to provide single sign-on. That means not between the federated GUI, but that credentials are taken from the Windows credentials. So this is a task for WebSphere in Dash Web GUI. Could you provide a document that covers all of the steps? Um, and actually, we had a, a session last time about impact single sign-on. And this, this would be very similar. I can send you a link to that presentation that we had on the, the last Ask, Ask the Experts. Um, but basically, it shows how to configure single sign-on within Dash. And there's a, a lot of additional configuration that has to be done in Impact and Dash, certain things that have to match up. The next question, how can we see when the sync failed? Logs only, or is there a method through Web GUI or WebSphere? Well, if the sync fails, uh, normally you, you shouldn't be able to, uh, uh, it, like, uh, if you try to use the tools, either they won't be there, or you cannot even um, execute them. And when you go to filter builder, um, you build there. The users are not there. Or you can check the object server if the user is not listed there. So then that's clear sign that the thing is not working.
usually you'll find the sync errors in the system outlog, um, and there'll usually be some sort of an error, LDAP error code that you can look up. Yeah, I mean, you can like the, uh, the you see uh, here the output that I have earlier in one of the slides. Um, you can compare those users and groups to the users you have in your object server. If you're missing any of those, then it, you're not syncing. I think that covers all the questions. If anyone has any additional questions, please ask them in the the chat now. Um, while we're waiting to see if there's any more questions, I did have two questions that we received ahead of time. Please discuss why one would use LDAP authentication via the object server versus the web GUI. Is LDAP writing mandatory within the web GUI? We already talked about the writing. But could you talk about why you would use the, the LDAP auth via the object server versus direct LDAP from web GUI? Well, it's easy for user management. Uh, most companies they have they store their users and groups in a central repository. So where would someone like want to manage like an extra uh, DB just for users and groups where you could have one? Right. It takes the workload off of the web GUI admin. So like if you have some sort of corporate policy that says somebody should have access to web GUI when they create the account, they'll put them in the right group and they'll have access and you don't have to think about anything or do anything. On the object server, you'd have to manually create those users. That's a good point. Also, if you're going to be integrating multiple applications into Dash, and you'll be using single sign-on with multiple applications. Um, not all applications will have object server authentication. Web GUI and Impact allow you to do direct object server authentication if you're looking at also integrating in TATAM or other applications. They don't allow direct object server authentication, then you would have to look at doing LDAP. The last question, when using Web GUI LDAP to object server user synchronization, the users cannot log in directly to Omnibus using the desktop client or by using ISQL or NCOSQL. The only interface will be the Web GUI, correct? And yes, that is correct. It really just creates the, the user so that you can log in with Web GUI and run the tools. Uh, yeah, because those users, when they got things over, they disable an object server. And as Phil mentioned earlier, you should not enable them. OK, there are no more questions. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending. And a special thank you for, to Stanford for offering your time and sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, please do take a few minutes to fill out your post-event survey. We take everyone's input very seriously and like to apply it to all of our future events. But this concludes today's conference, and you may now disconnect. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys.